I recently had my Steam backlog analysed by HowLongToBeat.com and it told me I had 55 days worth of games to get through. Problem is, I am time poor but incredibly greedy for games. I want to see things through to completion but without losing entire weekends. So the RPS video team, that's me and Noah, have gathered up a selection of delightful games you can finish in 3 hours or less. You don't even have to speedrun, enjoy them at their natural pace. In putting this together Together we discovered hundreds of potential candidates, so do add your own suggestions in the comments. I've also added links in the description to those games currently in the Steam sale that runs until July the 5th, just in case you want to pick them up for cheap. Anyway, here are the games. Far Lone Sales plays like the love child of Inside and Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. It's another of those artful 2D journey games, but carried out inside a thundering great vehicle that you control with lots of manual button pushing. Over the course of three hours you see a great deal then, a haunting bleached landscape that hints at ecological disaster without ever spelling out exactly what happened, but you rarely leave your mechanical home, aside from venturing forth to collect fuel for ever hungry engines, or trying to shift debris blocking your path. It's a generous game that wants you to reach your destination and you're not going to be bludgeoning in any skulls to steal fuel or anything like that, and it's this lack of threat that lets you focus on mastering your vehicle, finding ways to streamline your processes and balance fuel and wind power to keep your home trundling along. It's a game about travelling in as much style as you can muster in an unforgiving world, and it's a three hour trip well worth taking. For those of us scared of deep water, Abzu is a dream. Literally in that it isn't supposed to simulate what diving is actually like, with buoyancy compensators, snorkels and regulators, but offers the dreamy reality. What us fearful folk wish it could be. Freedom to simply swim without getting eaten. Even the minefields will only nudge you a little bit. This leaves you to enjoy the exploration, which is less about what you do than what you discover. Between the vivid aquatic life and the strange oceanic details, the world of Abzu is an alien planet but on Earth, and soggy. Everywhere you turn there's wonder and mystery. You know, it really makes up for all those depressing trips to the Sea Life Center to watch stingrays flop around in paddling pools. But it taps into something deeper, a primordial feeling of connection, whether it be the sea itself or our wider place in nature. Sure, you can see everything in the game in a couple of hours, but that feeling will make you want to stay longer. This horror anthology is the closest thing we've got to a game of Black Mirror, albeit a version set in the 1980s where tech has chunky analogue inputs to click into place. It's a collection of four tales, each about half an hour long, and each focusing on a different machine. In the first one you play a text-based adventure game, nervously typing in commands as strange things unfold around you. In another you're deciphering laboratory equipment with the help of a chunky user manual. My personal favourite places you in a monitoring station and has you operating a two-way radio and microfilm reader to interpret the strange messages you're receiving. Even if developers no code didn't hang each tail on a fun supernatural hook, I think I'd still get a kick out of twiddling the dials and clunking down great big plastic switches. It has a great sense of place, which can only help immerse you in the more out there elements of the story. Of course, to say any more would spoil it, so I won't. Play Dead's Inside is like a 2.5D German expressionist puzzle box. It's mysterious, dreary, slightly scary, and it's entirely possible you'll never really put your finger on why that is. Like Limbo, Play Dead's previous three hour treat, this is a puzzle platformer, but with a more ambitious run of ideas that includes mind control, gravity distorted swimming, and nightmarish stealth. It's brought to life with stunning animation. From animals to prisoners and soldiers, Inside quietly pushes visual boundaries in how the smallest of movements make the biggest impacts. This filters into game feel too. You really do feel like a little boy, sprightly but vulnerable in the face of an organization whose goals are as horrifying as they are cryptic. For its slim three hour runtime, it's impressive how much you see and how open it is to interpretation. Many have tried, many haven't exactly failed per se, but there's some outrageous stuff in here that defies explanation. Of course, you can't throw your perspective into the ring if you haven't played the game, so you should. 
If the noodly ambiguities of Inside don't appeal to you, might I suggest Hugh Hell, a game about a small creature who wants to eat a cherry, and another creature that tries to stop him from eating the cherry. And, well, that's about it. <laughs> It's from Amanita Designs who made Samorost and Machinarium. Like those games, this is another interactive picture book that you prod and poke and then giggle when creatures make honking noises or get hit with hammers. There's vague puzzling in here, but nothing that you won't solve by clicking on everything. I honestly think the point of it is to draw out the solution as long as possible. You see, it's much more fun seeing our heroic splodge try and fail again and again, especially when each new disaster results in a squawking punchline. There's the odd arcade sequence that feel more traditionally gamey, but nothing to stretch this beyond the two hour mark. It's a good spectator sport too, if people don't laugh at this while watching over your shoulder, they're all but guaranteed to be a robot. They should have used this as the test in Westworld, it would have saved them a whole lot of trouble. Pinning down the completion time on some games proves trickier, because difficulty is subjective. My next pick, Terry Kavanagh's VVV VVV, or V if you want, is as long or as short as your fingers can manage. You play a spaceman attempting to navigate a ship with the power of gravity flipping, but the ship is covered in spikes. If I was the company making the ship, I'd have asked the architect, is that too many spikes? But we'll never know what went on behind those closed doors. And now here we are, dying a hundred times over on rows of jagged teeth that line the floors, and the ceilings, and the ceilings that will soon become floors. Ample checkpoints keep your momentum going, but there are still individual rooms, each one named in a homage to Jet Set Willy, that will have you stalling for minutes, if not hours, as you curse your flabby digits. Excessive deaths may push this closer to four hours, but most spacemen will return to normality in a more comfortable three. It's one thing to wrap your game up in a couple of hours, quite another to do it while cramming in multiple realities, but this is exactly what Californium achieves. It's a bizarro trip through 1960s counterculture, where a failed sci-fi writer begins to hear voices from his TV, instructing him to tear holes in reality and reveal hidden worlds beyond. All my TV does is tell me to endlessly update the Netflix app. Real life is so mundane. Who'd want to live such a nightmare? Are our writer's visions all a symptom of his drug-addled mind? Or the hint of more sinister powers at work behind the scenes? Either way, it's a phenomenal visual trip as new worlds grow before your eyes, sprouting strange furniture and decorations that hint at alternate histories that may offer a better life for our struggling hero. The more you distort reality, the wilder the game becomes. But I won't spoil that for you in this video. It's one of those games you really have to see for yourself. If you've a couple of hours to spare, this'll turn a drab afternoon inside out. Well, our illustrious writer has discovered a taste for multiple realities. My next pick is Pony Island, one of those adventures that breaks the fourth wall that everyone seemed to be making a couple of years ago. This one is about a demonic arcade cabinet that is ostensibly about jumping a pony over obstacles, but is probably trying to eat your soul. There's quite a lot of correlation between these slightly meta, I know I'm a game games and short games, probably because it's hard to sustain the joke for too long. Other examples of the genre are the Stanley Parable, Frog Fraction, Dr. Langaskov and his exceedingly long game title, but I've opted for Pony Island because it's the only one with a pony that shoots lasers out of its mouth. Also, there's more of a decent puzzle game hidden under all the oddness, so it's something that you can actually tangle with and work out, instead of just watching it be clever for an hour or so. I sometimes wonder how many people overlook this hidden gem because of the name. Don't make that mistake for yourself. It's a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. Her Story is one of the most engaging detective games I've played for two reasons, a compelling subject and the simple tag approach to detecting. Presented as a desktop screen, you pick through archived footage of a police interrogation of a woman suspected of something. What can I do to help? An arcane filing system forces you to search for keywords, extracting names and references from one clip to branch your investigation into unseen footage. It really does feel like you're digging through stale archives, and it results in an intriguing dance, 
not just with the suspect, but information itself, as you chase down leads and see some terms bring the situation into startling clarity, while others completely flip your perception. Personally, I haven't written game notes down in years, but to keep track of all those keywords, I wound up drawing a diagram, and it's all too easy to get this immersed. Authentic, sincere, captivating, and dreadfully sad, her story has it all, proving that you don't have to possess the flashiest visuals on the block, though the VHS footage truly is wonderfully authentic, or complex systems to pack a real punch. A Case of Distrust is a Prohibition-era detective game that the creator, Ben Warder, describes as a blend of 80 Days, Phoenix Wright, and the board game Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Now those are three of my favourite things, so bundling them together can only result in something good. In practice, there's more Ace Attorney and Consulting Detective in its DNA than 80 Days. Like Phoenix Wright, you're trying to expose contradictions during interrogations, but it has Consulting Detective's more organic evidence collection, where every item or fact joins a massive list for you to pick through. With a notebook full of everyday items and random thoughts, you really do feel like you're doing more detective work to discover the relevance of clues than you do in the Ace Attorney series. Like many crime games, there's not a huge potential to replay once you know how it all unfolds, so luxuriate in those first three hours, and hope that we may get a second case soon. I hope you found this list useful or insightful. In the time it took to watch this video, you could have played about 10% of Stories Untold. Imagine that. I'm always on the lookout for short games to rinse through, so do add your own suggestions below. If you enjoyed this video, you could also subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun. We cover all things PC and would love to have you join us for it. We'll hopefully see you again soon, but I'm going to say bye for now.